Hey guys, Old and Tatted here. Um, I just thought I'd throw up a quick little video here on some of the stuff that I've been doing lately. Um, I don't know if people follow me on uh, Facebook when I had that, but I've uh, abandoned that. I showed a pictorial on how I made this knife here, the sheath. And uh, so, see, I put natural antler handle on there and put it shorter than the blade on each side there, the tang, so that way there if I baton, I'm not beating on the bone. It's just right there on the full tang part. Lashing points for making a lance. And this one, see, it doesn't have a straight blade across. It's kind of catched up a little bit. So that there is easy to, when you want to cut string or you're doing some fine carving you got this nice short little blade in the angle here and then it comes right up for a full tano and uh, yeah it's a good size thickness so uh, that's what this is and then the sheath I made from the scrap leather pieces I buy by the bag Hobby Lobby or Tandy or whatever so that's my knife and then uh, the hatchet, I replaced the other one I had that uh, somehow got chemicals or whatever on the leather and they just sort of like disintegrated on it. So I gave that to a friend. I tried putting a couple pieces of carved wood under there and then wrapped it with uh, paracord different ways. But uh, no, this is uh, the way it has to be. I just got to remove the varnish off of here. But uh, they come with a brown leather mask or sheath you might want to call it because it covers the whole thing and it's got like an oak leaf tool in it or you have a um a denier probably a 600 or something seven something denier nylon one that you slide the handle down in here and it it's got a rivet right there and then it comes over and snaps well that's kind of chintzy too so i made my own mask i took some uh, rivets like i used on the motorcycle seat if you haven't seen that, check out some videos of my motorcycle. I got the seat, the uh, backrest, and the back uh, coffin uh, toolbox on there. And Uh, this here just pops off like that and uh, it's open at the top here yeah, it just works in like that and then this comes over and snaps and the principle is, is this is a lot wider at this point than here so it's not uh, coming out and listen it's not moving the tables moving <laughs> you can still use it to pound and uh, stuff like that and it's not flopping all over the place and also if I have to go to somewhere where it's wet and mucky and nasty I'll just take that nylon sheath and leave my leather one at home so uh, that's the hatchet and the knife I made this pouch this I got a uh, I bought a kit at Tandy and then I used the um, thing as a template really and I've made these in different uh, types of leather net This one is uh, um, black, and uh, I have a barbed wire tooled on the top and the bottom, and uh, the skull snap. And then on the back side here, I tooled in a spider web and ONT. So you can either pop this and snap it in, or uh, do it like that. See, this hole here was for. I had this on the back of my motorcycle and I kept two bungee cords in there in case I ever had something I had to bungee to the back of the bike or to me. This was the bag for that. So I just switched it over and then hooked it up with this. And inside, when I had the bone antler for the handle, I took uh, one of them and uh, cut it off. And I made me an awl with a point on it. And then the other one has got the barrel rod 
for the striker. And I put ONT on that. And then in here is uh, dryer lint. I have uh, cotton that I've harvested along the side of the road from our cotton fields out here. If, uh, you guys would be interested in, in some of that natural cotton. It's got seeds in that in it, so you can tell it's definitely not from uh, Johnson & Johnson. So there's that there. And uh, what else do I have in here? Oh, I have some fat wood wrapped with jute twine. Everybody has that. And then this is a little thing I do. With uh, my thumbs as bad as they are, the wife got me a hot wax hand bath that uh, heats up big blocks of uh, wax. And uh, then you just stick your hands down in them. If you can get used to the heat, you just sink them in there and just let them set. Or you pull them out and put them in plastic bags and then you sit there and the wax in the plastic bag holds the heat in for my thumbs. But what I was doing is, that wax is just regular old wax. So I took some cotton mop strands. You know, you buy a cotton mop at a dollar store, general store, whatever, a couple bucks. Make sure it's 100% cotton and cut some of them strands off and dip them in the wax. That way there, they will hold their place and then you just light them and you have a candle and it drips down on itself so you know or put it in a small uh, bottle cap or shell or rock or anything and there you go you have a candle and it's I have two or three of them wrapped up here together so yeah, I've got one two three four five of them you can just pull them off at a time and you, you can see I've already used one or two of them off of here and that's all you need for a candle, even if it's just somewhere temporary. And that's what I've got in this one. So I'm going to throw all that back in here. And uh, this little bottle, I find these at uh, Dollar Tree for, believe it or not, a dollar. And uh, they're great for holding uh, your tinder or anything you want to keep waterproof because it's got a little rubber gasket in there. And... Uh, Sometimes you put them in there with Vaseline and cotton and uh, it'll keep them from getting all over in a little bottle and it's only a buck. So that's another pouch. And then uh, here's one here I made. Let me uh, pull these out for a moment. And uh, it's a round pouch like a lot of people on YouTube nowadays is showing how it's made. I made a video on this a while back. And uh, let's see the difference with mine is it's not just a bag because see I put this heavy duty eight nine ten ounce piece of leather on the bottom and uh, that way there if you need a work surface you can hook that on your knee tighten it up and you have a work surface whether you're napping for arrows or something like that or uh, flint you can do it right here if you're uh, whittling to make sharp sticks for hot dogs or rabbits or whatever. Got a nice little work table right there. You could even cut vegetables and stuff on there. And uh, then you just open it back up. What I found a trick is, is depending on the size of bowl you want, is how far you open this. If you make the string to where you open it all the way up, you still have nice little bowl here so if you have something in here and if it's round see it won't roll off like some people have their flip rods or whatever it won't fall out it makes a little bowl and if you tighten it up a little bit and uh, you don't have uh, to worry about stuff falling out especially if you use it for tinder you know how tinder likes to just you know go everywhere this kind of keeps it at bay and you still have that work surface and that's a uh, matter of fact, I just uh, finished an order. Uh, a customer wanted two of them with the deer skin, and I did the antler just as well. And on the bottom of these, I just used the natural color and put some uh, sealer and uh, balm and wax and that on them. So uh, there's two of them ready to go out to the customer. I got smaller ones. I got little ones like this with the the deer uh, horn. What do I got in here? Oh, I got a couple pieces of uh, quartz. Them are uh, good for uh, my mora. I can chip off there if I need to uh, make spark. And uh, 
or you know somebody wants to put something else in there you could put a couple of tufts of cotton in there for uh, quick tinder you know and uh, see what I like to use really is in the desert you use the sun match yeah I've got some char rope here but uh, what I do is uh, take these wicks they're already charred put them up to the sun get them glowing just and you have an ember all the way across the top of that wick. Well, then you stick that up in your tinder bundle. You know, you have a hold of it and you wrap it over it like that and you blow it and as soon as it catches fire, you pull your wick out and put it out. And you've got a lot, a lot of fires with this and this and Mr. Soul. Yep. So uh, that's what I have in here. I have more char cloth down there and uh, see if I need them with the flint. So, this also, if you need to, take this camouflage tape off and use that to make more char cloth, but I have a different one. Uh, here's another one, a uh, piece of uh, material that's got like a alligator or something kind of hide on it. And uh, that's got uh, char cloth in there. And it just throws in the bag and like it. <laughs> doesn't weigh anything, probably a couple of quarters is more weight than what this is. And uh, you got fire. Uh, what do I have in this one here? Oh, well, if you're more modern, these, this is a, a fast fire. You can throw one of them in there and it don't look as gaudy with the um, aluminum in that. Just a little Velcro on this one. I got bone on this. I take little jars and uh, wrap them in leather and sew the top and sew the bottom in leather so uh, you know if you want to keep something in a jar you got that there and uh, that's as far as it for the leather working stuff well besides one other item that I've done for my leather working and I'll have to move the camera to show you what I did there so be right back. Okay, so I seen this in one of the ads for uh, one of the leather manufacturers that sells uh, leather supplies and tools and stuff like that. And uh, they wanted a hundred bucks for the thing, and I don't know how much for the little box that holds all the tools in it. So I says uh, to myself, I said, self. You've got some of that stuff out in the back. Why don't you use it? And I said, all right. So what I did was I did this. I'm just holding the camera so you can see. So I've got some clips up here when you're gluing leather and that, especially welts and sheets. Some holes up here for uh, thingamabobs. And then I've got... Uh, this one here with the different slots in it and uh, all the different tools that I used and them there coming over and uh, then this is the box that they wanted to add extra I just made it part of it put a front on it and now I have all the spots for tools and that that I use and uh, well, this box that was a kind of a loose thing that they did so I just copied it and made a box out of wood. I haven't finished it or anything yet. And uh, I have the rulers and stuff like that up there. And then they had a drawer. So I put a drawer in it over here, see, with different stuff in there. You know. So I just have a screw on it right now. I'm going to go out and use my little lathe and make me a knob for it. And, uh, so that's uh, the little project that I've been doing. Uh, the back is plywood. Uh, this bottom part here was pine because I'd already made it together. I was using it for uh, something else. But these shelves and all that, this is oak. And uh, so it should last. I got the bottom screwed on so I could actually hide something in this side if I wanted to. Ha ha ha. Secret. And uh, different places for stuff. I got to dig some of these holes a little bigger so my hammer set up in there somewhere but uh, 
Yeah, and then I said, these are the pieces, there's my knife, and uh, the round tinder pouches, my little square gadget pouches, the uh, leather bottle, my mask for the Estwing hatchet, you know, for 35 bucks. I mean, you know, if you're really not into spending a lot of money on hatchets or any outdoor gear like that, you know, these things here, you know, if you take care of them, I mean, I, I messed up or somebody messed up and stuck the handle down in a bucket of something and then it just gone, so, so it was 10, 15 years old when I got it and it was old then, so, and so I got me a new one and uh, all's well that ends well, right? I got me a mask to put on it and then there's a little pouch, so, uh, this is Old and Tatted. Till next time, have a good one.